Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake Green, the Head of Technical Engagement here at the Skullmore Green. I'm joined by my good colleague, Tim Benstead. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the consumer unit and also the tails that are associated to it. More specifically, we want to know, can you install a consumer unit more than three metres away from the DNA cutout? There are lots of things we need to consider. One being short circuit, one being overload, and one being selectivity. <laughs> So where do you want to start first, Tim? Okay, let's start with the DNO. Okay. DNO says you can use our main cutout if, and the if is, if you put in the meter tail size that yeah. we require. And that typically, Jake, is as you were around 16 millimeter squared or 25 millimeter squared, depending on the area, depending on the nature of the your prospective short circuit current. But, but they sort of define what it is and, and we, rely on their goodwill mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that the cable from the meter tail, uh, the meter tail rather, from the consumer unit to uh, the meter is, is, is theirs in the sense that, that, that they can define what size we put in. Right. So if we go over that three meters then, before we get into the regulation side of it, if we go over three meters, we have to install one of these as prescribed by the DNO. Uh, well, they don't prescribe what right. it will be, but they're saying you can no longer use our cutout for protection against overload and short circuit. Correct, right. So, we want to take control then, really, yeah. don't we? So, when it comes into this, yeah. we have to use what they say. Yeah. So, in terms of cables, we have to use a 16mm or 25 depending on area. However, what comes out the other side is that that's the part that we're in control of. Yeah. Now, we know that most people use these for main consumer units. Yes. They take them into one of these at 100 amp maybe, yeah. and they take those cables accordingly. Yeah. However, there may be a time where you need to install cables that are not quite that size. Mm. For example, if you were feeding an EV charger, yeah, yeah. you could use one of these and feed the cables out yeah, the size accordingly. Yeah, yeah. So we need to install one of them. Before we move on to the regulations part though, Tim, my concern mm -hmm. or the thing that I'm not 100% sure with, is a selectivity. Yeah. So we've got an 80 amp fuse here, which comes with the, the product. But if we had a 63 amp at the cutout, yeah. and then we had 80 here, yeah. what's the point in it? Uh, well, we have no control, Jake, over what the DNO puts in. So in a sense, it's almost put that to one side uh, and, and ask yourself, is, is, is what I want an 80 amp fuse for my connected load or what it is that I'm supplying? And if that's the case, then put an 80 amp uh, fuse in. Um, just because it's more likely the DNO's fuse will operate before ours is a, is a sort of a separate issue. Mm. Uh, and, and, and obviously selectivity goes out the window to, to, to a, a significant extent. But you're still not guaranteed, with certainly with these ratings of fuse between an 80 and a 63, that, that perhaps both would actually blow under mm. those circumstances. But, but in a sense, we put aside the issue around the DNO's fuse and, and we just concentrate on the one. Making that we're sure we're in control of, yeah. of our cables. Yeah. So in terms of regulations then, where are we at? What's, what section, what part right. are we, we in? We, we're in chapter 43 and we're dealing with two specific areas, Jake. We're dealing with overload and we're dealing with uh, short circuit. And under overload, we've got uh, regulation 433.2.2 and it says, here, the device protecting a conductor against overload may be installed along the run of that conductor if the part of the run between the point where the change occurs, and that might be a change in environmental conditions, change in cross-sectional area, change in all sorts of things, uh, and the position of the protected device as neither branch circuits nor outlets for connection of the current using uh, equipment and fulfills at least one of the conditions, and one of the conditions is three meters. Okay. Uh, and the second area is to do with position of devices for protection against fault current. And here we have a similar regulation, regulation 434.2.1, except where regulation 434.2.2 or 434.3 applies, a device for protection against fault may be installed other than as specified in 434.2 under the following conditions. And under the following conditions, we have this three meter uh, uh, distance. And, and generally, as an industry, we've taken that to say, look, cut out to consume unit three meters. The minute you go beyond it, you have to start thinking about putting in a device such as this. I was going to ask that question. Where do we? Where does this three meters come from? Is it sort of a an old wives' tale? It's not an old wives' tale, but it's an old regulation, <laughs> uh, and so it's been. It, it comes out the international standard. It, 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 it's a, it's a, it's an international uh, coded uh, uh, value there, and so it's been there. 
for a long time. For a very long time. So can you install a consumer unit three meters away from the main cutout? Absolutely. As long as you're following these regulations that we've mentioned and providing it with that level of protection. Yeah. If you like this content, make sure you like, subscribe and share and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.